Hello and welcome. You're listening to CNET UK Podcast. This is episode 397 for Friday the 18th of July 2014. The sun's out for summer, which could mean only one thing. It's time to gossip about the next iPhone. We're rounding up the latest rumours about the iPhone 6 Plus. We find out why gamers are being kept out of the army. And we grow underground with a farm in an old wartime bunker. I'm Rich Chenholm and joining me in our high-tech London studio this week is Jason Jenkins. Hello. 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 Good to see you. I'm here. It's been I'm a on the while. table. Look, I can lean on the table. I know, it's good, isn't it? We can it's do a, yeah. It's quite a oh. cool little red table, this. That's good, yeah. And uh, Luke Westway, how are you doing? Are you, are you feeling nonchalant? Are you going to lean on the table? Or are you uh, no, I'm actually, tall? I'm not sure this is visible on camera, but I'm doing a kind of lean with my legs. Oh, don't show that. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Nobody needs oh, to see that. Oh, Family oh, show, people. Oh. Uh, yeah, I lean with my bottom half. I see. Well, if you, if you do want to see uh, Luke's bottom half leaning, then uh, you can watch this and all our videos on CNET or YouTube.com slash CNET. Uh, but for now, let's kick off with the latest news. So, Microsoft has said that it's going to be cutting 18,000 jobs in the next year, uh, 12.5 thousand of which, roughly speaking, yep. are expected to come from Nokia. Uh, Nokia devices, which Microsoft, of course, has only just acquired. So mm -hmm. uh, Nokia has kind of bought that bit of Nokia, the devices section, and now it is cleaning house. Um, the uh, Microsoft's new CEO, Satya Nadella, says, making these decisions to change are difficult but necessary. Uh, Nadella added that he would shift um, uh, select Nokia X smartphones, which are uh, the uh, uh, Nokia phones that run on Android, mm -hmm. over to Lumia and Windows Phone. So getting rid of a lot of people and Android as well. That's yeah. I mean, it's, it's obviously always a shame to hear about uh, about uh, job loss, especially for it's such a big European company. But uh, some of our commenters uh, feel that it was a necessary thing. So we have uh, Sane Nazok said uh, there was always a need to clean house at Nokia. If Nokia did it five years ago, they could have been a turnaround success story. Instead, the workers took the elevator all the way down, and now it's hit the ground floor. Layoffs always happen with mergers. In this case, Microsoft acquired a company well past its heyday. Strong words wow. there. Harsh that, yeah, words, yeah. That is, that's quite harsh, harsh really. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess yeah. he's right. There is some sort of inevitability about this, mm -hmm. but I do feel sorry for the people at Nokia who have been working really hard in the run up to this acquisition going through to kind of make it work. Absolutely. Like, partly for themselves, but also, you know, to try and kind of integrate the business with Microsoft. They've been rewarded with uh, a P45, mm. which, yeah. is a, which is a bit of a shame, really. Um, and I guess it's. Well, it's also dumping Android. That's that really. I mean, that, the writing was on the wall for that. But it's also dumped Asher phones. Remember those? They were the oh, little. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The kind of things didn't really make much sense here, but they were for developing countries. Very I mean, basic phones. Very yeah. basic phones. Yeah. Feature phones. It's basically smartphones, but kind of smartphone like. They're getting rid of those and they're replacing that with uh, Windows Phone. And they get rid of Series Forty, like that was the bit of Symbian that was left. They get rid of all of that stuff. So mm. everything's Windows Phone. So their new kind of strategy is get as many Windows phones out there for as cheaply as possible. So everything's right. Windows. Windows Phone, and th th I guess that was the reason, the real reason that Microsoft bought uh, Nokia to start with, was just to somehow increase their Windows Phone market share because they're absolutely nowhere in the market. There are no apps; no one's really bought them, not in significant numbers. Mm. So it, you can kind of see the sense, but the the human cost is pretty high, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah bad news for a lot of um, uh, Nokia employees, hmm. unfortunately. Um, all right, next up, uh, three. Uh, the UK phone network is putting Wi-Fi on the underground. This is a good news for Londoners. A tie up with Virgin Media's Tube Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. um, which is already offered on, like, I think every other major UK network. The major ones, yeah. O2, so O2, e, Vodafone, e, yeah. Vodafone, yeah. They, mm. They've all got it, and now Three's got it as well. Mm. Um, what's quite interesting about this, though, is that uh, as well as getting connected on the London underground, um, at, I think it's 127 stations, which is pretty, pretty good. I think it's about 137, roster. but they're adding a few more, 30. so it'll be 150 very soon. Wow, cool. Mm. Um, but uh, you'll be able to make calls and send texts underground um, because three is, 3 is launching something called uh, its In Touch app, mm -hmm. um, which is a snappy name. Rich, <laughs> what exactly is In Touch? Uh, this is a, it's an app that allows you to uh, make calls and send texts 
uh, over Wi-Fi, but using your actual allowance. So it's not just um, it's not just kind of uh, a separate app that sends uh, that send you know the, like, like Skype or something that does VoIP calling. It actually allows you to use your minutes and use your data plan and that kind of thing. So you'll be underground and you could actually uh, you could make calls and, and send texts and stuff. You'd be on the train and you could be like, "Hello, I'm on the train." And everyone, go, how's he doing that? He's, he's a magician. So, Isn't that yeah. a weird thing for a phone network to launch, seeing as they uh, offer? phone sort of services. Well, that's it. I mean, this is kind of interesting. It's, it's sort of a wider thing. I mean, obviously, this is a very London-centric story, but as a general wider uh, um, sort of uh, uh, trend, um, networks have been offering free Wi-Fi uh, as kind of a selling point. But also, they're, they're kind of as they're looking at their bandwidth getting stretched by lots of data, and especially with 4G. They're looking at trying to kind of um, keep you on, but, um, but, but you know, even though they're, they're, they're not necessarily getting the revenue from uh, the phone calls and the text that you're necessarily going to be sending, they're trying to find other ways of keeping you on and still having you make calls. And uh, they used to be dead against all this VoIP stuff, but uh, now they realise that if they make their own app, then uh, they can have their own version of Skype and then they can make money from you that way. Right, I see. So, yeah. Crafty. Mm. I love that word, VoIP. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, in South Korea, um, being addicted to video games may get you out of military service. Um, so uh, this is um, recently online people have, sh- have shone a light on a policy amendment from 2010 uh, that may grant exemption from uh, South Korea's mandatory 21 months of military service for um, healthy young males if you're addicted to games. So um, according to uh, the regulations relating to the discharge of military public service, exemption from mandatory military service may be granted if the person has received six or more months of treatment for alcohol, drug, or video game addiction. Um, so there you go. Well, they should bring back national service, obviously. I think that's... Uh, well, that's they, they have national service and... and bring back, uh, bring back hanging, games. bring back national service, all that kind of stuff. That's what we should do over here. <laughs> bring back all, these, all these kids <laughs> playing video games. Hang on, I feel like I should be writing this down. <laughs> hanging, <laughs> national service. Exactly. Okay. Kids these days, they don't know, they don't know they're born. Don't they know they're born. some job openings at the Daily Mail, if you really... If you, <laughs> if you want to <laughs> exercise this right, a bit right. further. Well, it's, I think what's interesting about this is, is that kind of entering games into, uh, into sort of the same conversation as drugs and alcohol. And yes. especially in a legal context, to actually enshrine that in the law that gaming can be considered as an addiction that's as potentially as harmful or as uh, as addictive as drugs and alcohol. And and this all flared up uh, because it's part of a wider discussion mm. uh, in South Korea as to whether games should be regulated like yeah. like those other in- intoxicants. <laughs> um, so there you go. Um, so should our game our game is addictive. Who knows? Uh, I don't know, but if um, if, you, if you got you out of uh, serving in the army, I think I would quite quickly uh, find games very addictive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm stu- I can't, 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 can't stop playing thumbs, Tetris. Yeah. Completely what's, what's that, Sergeant? One more game. Just, just one more game. One more game. I'll ca- be right there, Sergeant. Right there. <laughs> I'm crushing candy. What's that, Sergeant? Charge. I'll be right with you, honestly. Just, <laughs> just let me save this. Uh, it's one. worth noting, perhaps, that not a single person so far has qualified for exemption. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> have you got to play so often that you'd basically die? Uh, yes, if you die, you're exempt as well. Okay, <laughs> right. yeah, that's, yeah, good. That's, yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> but not from taxes. No. no. Okay. Uh, Amazon is eyeing up unlimited book subscriptions mm-hmm. for um, uh, one cent under $10 a month. That's $9.99 in less confusing parlance. Um, <laughs> so what's happened here is a web page, an Amazon web page that since be- has been taken down. Yes. Um, if you're watching the video, you can kind of see the story on screen now. Uh-huh. Uh, points to a service called Kindle Unlimited. You can see a banner there. And it basically suggests that it's going to be like uh, kind of Spotify for books. You pay a subscription fee hmm. and then you get unlimited access to all of the books and, and, and some audio books that you want. Yep. We don't know if it's Amazon's full library. We don't even know if it's really happening for definite, but it's a pretty strong indication that this is what Amazon's planning. Cool. So this sounds great. Would, I, I, would to- I would totally pay for this. Why is it good? Because Spotify totally changed the way I listen to music and I think this would do the same for, for, uh, for books. Because, I, I mean, I, I read quite a lot, but I... I, I wouldn't want to spend the money on buying books all the time. I can't afford to buy as many books as I want to buy. Or I buy the books I want to buy and then I haven't got any money. So I would totally pay for this. I really would. And the, other right. thing about, the other thing about Spotify as well with, with music is, I don't know if this has happened to you, but I find myself listening to a much wider range of stuff, even if I only listen to it for a bit and then don't like it. So I might read a couple of chapters and then and then go back to it. I, it's post-ownership. I, I don't like owning things. This is great. I'd totally go for it. It's really not, is it? It's really not. <laughs> it's not good at all. That, books are not expensive. They are not expensive. They're a few quid. Depends how often you read, though. How many you read. How many books do you really read? I re- read for a bit every night. And with the Kindle, you can get um, mm. like a sample of a book anyway. You can get like, mm. the first chapter or something, which is oh. more than enough to know. This is just this point. is just probably just another way of locking people into that mm. massive con that is Amazon Prime, which is now like, <laughs> what is it, 70, 80 pounds, 70 pounds here, I think. Mm. Something like it's that. Not cheap. Yeah. Oh, it's it, like, no way is it worth it. I don't know. I I am not as enthused at this. And I, I like the idea of owning books. Mm. 
come on, we're that generation, right? I'm, I'm still, we be, I'm yeah, still like bereft that I, I have all my books are, are digital, you know, because I've had to buy so many blinking Kindles when mm. I've lost them or they've been stolen. Right. I've spent more on Kindles than I have on books, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, to read, to read my actual library, I have to Fair keep enough. buying Kindles for a hundred quid. Well, I, re- I read on, I read on the train every day, mm. so and I'm reading probably about as much as you, as a normal person with a job that's not reading, can. And I probably spend like six pounds every sort of. I don't know, eight weeks, six to eight weeks, like on a new book or something. You're quite a slow reader, though, aren't you? I'm, I am a very slow reader, actually, mm. famously. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Growing Underground <laughs> aims to take... I'll stop with that. Growing Underground aims to take agriculture subterranean. Uh, so this is something that Andy's been to see. Um, he's yeah. not here at the moment, you'll have noticed. Um, he's still down there. He's still underground. And viewers. He's We've sent him to Sunderland. <laughs> yeah, we've actually, sent that's true. As punishment um, to think about what he's done. Um, but what he Andy, knows what he, he did. knows. He knows what he did. What has the mole man been up to this week? <laughs> well, what Andy Moleman uh, has been up to <laughs> is he went underground into a London World War II bomb shelter, which has been reclaimed for underground farming, and it's pretty cool. Um, you can see some of the pictures um, on screen now. Uh, if you, again, if you're watching, um, it is uh, modern hydroponic farming methods and LED technology. So basically, it's these huge underground tracts of, of tunnel um, that are full, basically, of these tiny seeds, and they're not grown in in soil and and the water is on a constantly recycled circuit. Uh, the temperature is constant, so it doesn't need to be heated. And uh, because it's a closed environment, there's no pests. And, and basically, who knew that underground there is the perfect farming mm. environment? So We've we have been, been foolishly farming on the surface like idiots what for chumps thousands, of, thousands of years. Um, so it's yeah, a, an interesting look at the way that farming may go in the future. It looks really cool, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it's really cool. And there's not much in there's not much there yet, but the the the, the, the idea is that there's like stacks and stacks of these. It's not mm. just like one line of yeah. of um, yeah. plants like it is at the moment. It's more of a proof of concept at the moment. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'd totally be to survive a zombie apocalypse in there as well. I think you know, you'd be <laughs> yeah. able to grow your own. Yeah, you, as, as long as you could survive the World War yeah. Two bombing, you could probably <laughs> survive a zombie apo- apocalypse. As yeah. long as you like cress and thyme, because I, I think that's basically all they're growing there at the moment it's not like radishes and <laughs> radishes Why delicious like, radishes delicious <laughs> all the radishes <laughs> you can farm <laughs> if only there was radishes and it would solve everything i'd go down there now i'm gonna buy you some radishes <laughs> well we have actually dispatched andy out into the field a few times as you may have noticed by his absence from this podcast so uh, look out for more photo stories from him including he went to the farmer air show this week yes so look out mm. for that Meow. planes <laughs> Cool. Well, that's uh, that's no. <laughs> yes, plane. Yes. You did a good plane noise, and I just said the word. Together, they yep. give a full picture of what, um, a what word you can picture. expect. Yeah, word. Whatever yeah. that was about. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Well, why don't we move on and find out what else is going on this week in this week's big picture? Yes, it's that time again. The rumours are flying, the gossip is flowing, and simply everyone's talking about the next iPhone. So what do we know about the iPhone 6? Precious little just yet. It's due later this year, and if the rumours are true, we could see some big changes. And the main change that everyone's talking about is that for the first time, the iPhone could change size. As 5-inch phones become the norm and 6-inch phablets threaten to take the place of tablets for many phone fans, Apple has generally resisted the trend towards bigger devices. And yes, we've seen it grow fractionally longer and we've seen it get a new colourful casing. But if a new 4.7-inch or even a 5.5-inch version is unveiled this time round, it'll be the biggest physical change yet. As usual though, Apple is keeping its cards close to its chest. But Apple has given us a few clues in iOS 8, the new software. The Touch ID fingerprint scanner is open to third-party apps, the camera has more manual controls, and most interesting, you'll be able to connect your phone and your iMac to answer phone calls on your computer. As usual, we can expect more power and possibly a bigger battery, which you'll need to power that bigger screen, but whatever's in the iPhone 6, it's bound to sell like hotcakes. Which leaves the biggest question of all, when can you get your hands on it? Well, keep it to yourself, we reckon you should clear your calendar in September. Anyway, so uh, what, else, what, uh, what have we been hearing from our readers about this? Well, Sketch has written in, Sketch R, Sketch R, and he said 5.5 inches is overkill. The Galaxy S5 is 5.1 inch, and even that seems cartoonishly large for a phone, (laughs) in my humble opinion. I think 4.7 inch will hit the sweet spot for people who want both functionality and compactness. And by compactness, I mean it can still fit in your pocket fairly comfortably. That's Sketch's opinion. All right, well, um, thanks, Sketch. 
Uh, Norseman mm-hmm. in the comments is um, far less patient. He says, is "Why does ram- ram- rampaging and pillaging through the comments?" Norse- Norseman. I'm assuming it's a he because it's Norseman, but yeah. uh, who knows? Norseman says, "Why doesn't Apple just put a phone in the iPad Mini to make monster phone fans happy and get it over with? <laughs> get it over yeah. with, Apple. <laughs> Why doesn't Apple just end this grim charade <laughs> and just make a big?" phone, iPad, and then we can all just go live in a cave with it. Absolutely, and yeah. beat each other over the head with it. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, uh, Norseman, tech news junkie, replies, well, yeah. with the new continuity feature coming in iOS 8, you can still receive calls when your phone rings. Not the same, but pretty cool. That said, it would be nice to have an iPad with a speakerphone. I think what's mm-hmm. happened there is Tech News Junkie has taken the kind of letter of what Norseman said, but not the spirit, <laughs> like, not, not the tone of it. I don't think Norseman was trying to make a serious point. I think the clue was in Monster Phone fans. Mon- Monster Phone, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so what do you guys think? I mean, Jason, how do you think, uh, is this a, th- a very Apple thing to do if they do change sizes? Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because Apple, for years, went its own way, uh, and it refused to kind of respond to trends in the market. It was famous for... Well, re- this is really a Jobs thing, Steve Jobs. He was kind of refused to bow to anyone, really. Mm. But that kind of changed around about the iPad Mini. If you remember at that time, uh, he, Steve Jobs once upon a time said, "Oh, we're never going to make a small uh, iPad because mm-hmm. um, you know you need to file off your fingers to use it." There was, there was that sort of thing, anyway. And then, of course, lo and behold, they came up with the iPad Mini, which was basically an attempt to stop Google from kind of um, taking all their market share with cheap Android tablets. Mm-hmm. And very successful it was too. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of was really the first time I've really seen Apple completely respond. To a market joined in sort of recent times. Mm-hmm. And if you look at uh, iOS 8, well, that whole sort of WWDC uh, conference really was all about, uh, for me anyway, it was all about um, Apple coming up to speed, getting up to speed with Android in many ways, sure. looking at some of the things that people like about Android, the customizability, the ability for apps to kind of talk to each other and all that. And a lot of that was kind of, a lot, a lot of those features are taken from Android and done in a very Apple-y way. So mm-hmm. I don't think this would, so it, it wouldn't surprise me if, if the next iPhone is essentially a response to um, people, for many years people saying, oh, we want a larger screen, we want a larger screen, or maybe even mm. them having two sizes of iPhone. Which, Choice. Is, which once upon a time would be a very unapple thing to do, but that's one of the rumours that there'll be two different sizes of iPhone. That would sure. seem, hey, because people because there are different people on different things, right? Not, maybe one iPhone isn't for everyone. Now. Absolutely. Okay. My um, view. Absolutely cool. And uh, Luke, what do you think? Um, I think that we won't see anything particularly exciting with the iPhone six. I think we're. I think a couple of iPhone generations ago, we we got into the point where Apple is basically sort of coasting, kind of milking the iPhone. I mean, you, you can say that it's lazy, but it did sort of invent the category and kind of invented the tablet category in sure. a meaningful way. I know it wasn't the first smartphone, the first tablet, blah, 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 but it it's always been their, their demo, hasn't it? Exactly, just, just yeah. Step in and yeah, really exactly. Apple's sort, it exactly. Apple's sort of, Apple's whole shtick mm. is that it invents new products. And so does it care too much about the the iPhone 6, you know, like it's it's just sort of churning them out. Well, I think I know what you're getting at. I think you're you're hinting at a new yes, product somewhere. Yes, I'm hinting at a new product. What could it be? Could um, it be? Yeah, it's it? a Casio. Yeah, it's a Casio That's watch. It. Oh my <laughs> God, yeah. we've got the world exclusive. Well, First look at the iWatch. The iWatch. It's got it's got a little light. Um, it's got a stopwatch. Um, I'm not sure how to work that. It can 20 contacts. Yeah, uh, no, it can't do that, actually. But it can do both 24-hour and 12-hour um, time. No, this is not the iWatch Blimey. disclaimer. Oh. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm, I, we're thinking now, and I'm sure Apple is, is thinking as well, as to what comes next, because um, the iPhone is... Uh, Almost at the end of its rope, I think. So. Right, okay, cool. Well, so if we're all sick of the iPhone, then you're probably not going to enjoy this week's quiz because it is all about the iPhone. So let's uh, head in and let's talk about some Apple rumours. So this week's quiz is all about Apple rumours. So what we're going to do is I'm going to name some rumours and you're going to tell us whether these were real Apple rumours rumoured by real people or whether I have just made them up. So uh, okay. we're going to talk about some r- ridiculous Apple rumours. That sounds hard. Well, could be, like, the answer could be anything. This is just like 50-50, isn't it? Let's, well, it is. Absolutely. Let's find out. So question wow. number one. Apple. Hey, hang on, hang on. We don't know what we sound like. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, fingers up. What does everyone sound like? Luke, you sound like this. Classic. Cal also, please, Jason man. sounds like this. Patriotic, very good. Very British. This goes on for a little while, does it? <laughs> right, so question number one. Is this a real rumour that actually happened? Was this something that people were actually talking about? Apple has created a whole new screw to stop people getting into the iPhone. 
Oh, mine takes too long to start. <laughs> yes, <laughs> default. default. <laughs> well, I might get it wrong. The best kind of win, yeah. Uh, Luca, what is, was that a rumour that people actually thought was a rumour? Yeah, uh, that, that was a rumour. I seem to remember. I remember it was you a, writing that rumour. Yeah, it was <laughs> pent- pentalobic or something like that. That's true. In August 2012, Apple, it was rumoured Apple had created a whole new screw, but it turns out they just were using a very unusual screw. So oh. There you go. Uh, just, just an old Ooh. screw. Just, just an old, just reusing any, an old any screw. screw. That's right, classic then. Apple. Classic <laughs> Apple. Just an old screw. All right. Question number two. <laughs> Apple, this, now is this a real rumour or is it just made up? Apple has plans to sell a phone called the iPhone Maths. Jason. Uh, that's not a real rumour. That was a real rumour. No! Yeah. Yeah, right. So in uh, in 2013, there was talk of a slightly larger iPhone called the iPhone Maths. Oh. Wow. Uh, or the iPhone Math, I guess, if you're in America. Oh. I don't know. So that's uh, really? one, <laughs> one point to Luke. And, uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, a Chinese website. It must have been true. Anyway, and uh, finally, so this is another rumor that, uh, that may or may not have been going around. Was this an actual rumor or is this something I've just made up? Apple is ditching Mac OS X for Windows. Jason. Uh, that was a true rumour. That was a true rumour, yes. I think yeah. I wrote that. Back no, I didn't. Two, I back didn't. in 2006, that was. 2006, wow. <laughs> back when it never it was, came to pass. Yeah. Isn't that strange? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, all fair right. enough. So, in all. that case, yeah, it's one all. The tiebreaker, nail-biting, tense tiebreaker situation. Oh, yeah. So, the very first iPhone, before the iPhone 3G, the very, very first model of iPhone. How many did the iPhone sell, the first iPhone? Jason. Two million. Let's see if Luke can get any closer to that. Oh, that's a bit of a clue, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I never remember how to properly game this this system when someone's already guessed. I can't remember. <laughs> Was it two two point one million? No, I think it was fewer. Um, uh, I think what one point five million. That's incorrect. It was six million. So you oh, wow. underestimated the first iPhone. <laughs> no. so six million, the first iPhone. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's then, actually really, really. Yeah. That's really impressive. Well, God. considering the Samsung S5 sells that in like two weeks. Maybe. Yeah, but yeah. the very first, like, not, not to, so the one without 3G. Yep, that's six right. Six million people bought a phone without 3G. <laughs> I that's did. amazing. I know, I, I did. Mean, that's yeah. interesting. <laughs> I, didn't, I honestly didn't know that. That's quite an interesting yeah. fact. It's, uh, well, there you go. it's good, good stuff, that first iPhone. We've all learned something. So that means... Mm-hmm. Uh, it's iPhone business. Oh, I, I, to be All fair, right. I locked that one out. But uh, yeah, okay, I'll take it. You know, I haven't won any. I haven't won any quizzes yet. <laughs> That's as it oh, should no. be. I, should, yeah, I shouldn't say that in case no one's like, no one had noticed. But. Well, well, oh, no, we notice. We yeah, notice. we notice. This, this is hotly contested. Yeah, this yeah. is the section that matters more to us than uh, people watching. If you're still watching, <laughs> absolutely. So Jason <laughs> gets is better now. on the leaderboard. Well, I tell you what, let's uh, let's see what you guys have been talking about this week instead of what we've been talking about. Why don't we go to this week's feedback? Okay, first up, Liam O'Malley says, is Microsoft ever going to release the Windows Phone 8.1 update? Mm. Is he ever going to release it? Is he? We've been waiting forever. Is he? Are Come he? on, Microsoft. Come on. Come on, Bill Gates. If only it had been released this week. Oh, oh, oh right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. It's Hooray! already out. It's already out. It's on, I think, probably not on every phone, but it's yes. on most of them, isn't it? So this is the Cyan update. Okay, good. Mm. One, well done. Well done, Microsoft. So, good um, name. There you go, Liam. Uh, download away. Uh, ben Holland Young, he emails, what do you think of the Nexus 5? Good question. It's great. Love the Nexus 5. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. What a it's, it's good. It's cheap. Cheap. Uh, it's about well, 300 quid, something like that? Yeah, something like that. Uh, um, uh, we have uh, Nick in, in the office, our, our, our chief chief sub and master of all words, um, the page master. He, um, uh, Yeah, Nick Nick has one. I, and actually, I see loads in the wild, way, way more yeah. than I Do thought you? I would. Are you actually. like phone spotter? I might you, like, you like the yeah. Bill Lodi of tech? I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just love, what's it called? Twitching, is that when you... Twitching, yes, yeah, yeah, Twitching is what I do on the tube. Spring watch, um, phone watch. <laughs> yeah, spring, there's definitely a pun there, but I can't remember. It's a, I mean, it's always a good sign, because we can talk about what phones we like and how, what good value they are and stuff, but in terms of actually, you know, people actually owning them and having them in their pockets, then... Yeah, yeah. Different I see things. loads of Lexus 5s, actually. Mm. Well, sure. one thing I would say, though, yes. is that the Moto G 4G, it is half the price, mm. and it's also 4G. Mm. Um, okay, the screen's a bit small, it's 4.5, inches but you're losing half an inch it's so worth 150 it's half an inch worth 150 quid to you or you or you it's that's, worth, worth well, considering it's good 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 stuff the it depends energy, which half it? an inch it is i guess <laughs> <laughs> okay probably enough for that joey scarf yes joey scarf he says there are lots of rumors that the moto 360 smartwatch will be com- comparative what's that competitively priced oh no comparatively priced to lg and samsung's do you think it will be? I'm not so sure. So basically, is the Moto 360 giving me the same price as the ones already available from LG and Samsung? This is like the Android smartwatch, the Android Wear one mm. from Motorola that everyone's excited about because it looks quite sexy and 
Oh yeah, yeah it doesn't look yeah, like a be sad, square. Yeah. This is the one that's a lovely mm-hmm. circle. A plastic strap. Lovely yeah. circle, not they horrendous square. They put some actual square. effort into the design yeah. rather than right. what can we do? Square, plastic, job done. Yeah. Uh, is it going to be the same price? Um, um, we really don't know, but it better be. I think mm. it's fair to say. Been confirmed, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it should be cheap because like smartwatches are going to get cheaper. So well, one problem that they have is that uh, I, what Motorola might have is that uh, Samsung has been giving the, some of the watches away with tablets and phones. So you know that's it, true. Can't get yeah, I, I, that. I, yeah. I mean, mm. even if even if this isn't even if this is expensive or more expensive than the, than the rivals, and the, this is all still relatively first gen products as well. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in a year or two, it'll be. I think they'll all be next to nothing or given away with phones. And um, I think they'll be pretty useful though. I, mm. I still I hang on to the idea of a smartwatch. I don't think any of the ones I've seen are, are really worth the time yet but sure. I can see where it's going yeah yeah cool definitely. okay all right good Dom MG Mangles brilliant Ama- amazing Dom, Dom MG Mangles that's amazing all right he says which tech are you most looking forward to that can make your that will make your everyday life easier everyday yeah, life that's easier that's a hard one isn't it uh, mm. yeah I mean I like my life to be easier um, it's certainly better than the alternative. Um, I'm going to say 5G, and the reasoning is yeah. is that I got 4G a few months ago, and it's actually made a much bigger difference to my general life and well-being, mm-hmm. um, you know, on the quality of life scale. <laughs> um, yeah, it's become as important to me as food. Um, yeah, no, 4G, 4G I think is great. I, I never realized how frustrated I was with rubbish, rubbish 3G. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to 5G because 4G is never not enough. I'm that kind of personality. Fast forward a year to so when you're saying 4G is yeah. awful. 4G. Now oh, everyone's got it. It's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Now that everyone well, else is I'm on I'm looking 4G. forward to 4G because I live in an area that doesn't get 4G. <laughs> I love it most of the country. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the great unwashed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. usual. I'm looking forward to be Sorry able to read that. as many books as I want <laughs> on my Kindle whenever I want for, for 10 quid a month. Is anyone Rubbish. looking forward to the Internet of Things? Uh, yeah, oh, I, want yeah. My, I want my house to do uh, That's the standard one, isn't it? I've got a Nest. I've been mm-hmm. testing a Nest, you know, the Nest thermostat, you know, that sets your heating for you. And uh, it's quite hard to test the moment because it's so hot. So <laughs> it's turned the heating off, as you'd expect, which, yeah. you know, like any thermostat would do. Yeah. And I just turn the heating off. That's good, though. I mean, but, yeah, fast yeah. forward to winter, yeah, yeah. You know, I, can set the, I can set the heating from bed. That's, the, that's, that's cool. making my life right, easier. Yeah. So far, it's done everything right. You know, <laughs> so far, it's yeah. summer. Let's it's not off. have heating. Yeah. Good job, Nest. Two hundred quid well spent. Yeah, full yeah. marks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, cool. That's the end of the feedback. Great. Well, thanks very much, everybody. Keep the feedback coming. Uh, yeah, email us our new email address: cnetukpodcast at cbsi dot com, and uh, or on Facebook as always. Uh, so that's it for this week. Right. Thank you very much, chaps. Thank you very much, Jason. No worries. Thank you very much, Luke. Thank you, Rich. Thanks for our producer, Mark, who you will never see. And uh, right, we're off. See you later.